um, at the town level, they have this position. Um, there's a woman who's the arts and culture coordinator, and she has secured a lot of locations that are rented specifically for artist use. So along the waterfront, the Hyannis, the Hyannis waterfront at the harbor, they have a lot of um, sheds. They call them the high arts shanties that artists can use as like a pop-up craft venue. Um, I think they do some like fine art stuff too, but it's mostly like craft and artisan items. And then they have three buildings that are just one block off of Main Street that they call the High Arts Campus. And so um, one of them is a live-in artist studio. One is an old, it was a barn and they've turned that into gallery and studio space. And then the other location is a former sea captain's home. And back in 2019, my friend, some friends of mine were running a theater out of the barn. And they said, hey, did you know that the, we were coordinating events together and they, they were like, hey, did you know that the, the gallery next door is open? Um, and so I was able to go to this arts and culture coordinator and say, hey, like, I want to start an alternative art gallery here. Um, I have zero experience, zero plan, <laughs> but I found two, uh, two collaborators uh, at the event that I was helping coordinate a poet and a dancer. And I was like, hey, like, let's, let's start this thing. Um, and from, so we opened in August of 2019. And at that time, we we're focusing on exhibitions um, and we realized that we were less of like a traditional retail gallery, which is what our community is more familiar with and more of a museum setting um, where we were putting together uh, more curated exhibits centered around a topic. And we were typically choosing topics that um, were relevant to current events um, and current cultural questions. Um, and then we were also focusing on community centered events like an open mics and book club discussion groups. Um, since it, the It's interesting with the folks you said you, you met them sort of on the fly. So it was sort of an opportunity that just sort of came up. Um, how did you, did you know right away that you're gonna be doing like alternative type programming? and doing, you know, being experimental? Was that something that came up through like a, a conversation or, a, you know, a, a deeper discourse, like a meeting or something like that? Yeah, that's definitely something that we knew we wanted to do right away because um, the arts and culture scene on the Cape is very, it's very homogenous. And so if you're, I imagine it's similar on Martha's Vineyard, if you're doing anything outside of the beach landscape, um, it's challenging to get to get a foothold. Um, there's, and I understand, like you know, when you walk out onto the beaches, especially the ones that are more wild, it's completely moving. It's like being in a a totally different world than where you were ten minutes prior. Um, so I understand that like desire to to recreate this that setting, uh, and also there's more to to living in these spaces. Um, so. You know, there's like, there's probably like five abstract artists on, on Cape that are really well known and I love them very much. And also I want to make space for, you know, the kids who are coming up because I don't know if you experienced this on the vineyard, but um, most of all of my friends from high school studied in Boston and New York and Chicago and never came back. And I see that happening with my former students too. They leave and they're like, oh, there's nothing here for me. And so they yeah. don't come back. So yeah. I think that's been one of our big drivers of, of providing something alternative. Yeah, yeah, that's the challenge for sure here. This is something actually I tried to do with the Martha Vineyard Art, Art Council, but that's, and this is something I'd like to do more of, but that's, we'll put that, that's not the issue at hand today. Um, but so yeah, but it's interesting to hear your your comments on that. Um, okay, so yeah, so your your programming is really interesting. So you you knew that this was going to be something 
different. You know, you were sort of doing like an artistic insertion into the artisan craft museum kind of regular thing. That's interesting because I really didn't know that for sure because, you know, you do have that shack thing, you know, that more programming at least than we do here. Um, how, how do you, um, how do you decide your programming exactly? Do you, um, do you do um, any kind of research in particular? What is your inspiration for your, for the programming shows? And there, and I know you do a lot of community programming too, so you can talk about those separately if you want those two different things. Yeah, those are, those kind of are two, two different topics. And I think uh, in, as we move forward in the future, I think I want to be planning ahead a little further and connect the through lines. But in our first, our first year was like a big test. <laughs> and so um, I had a relationship with, for our very first show, I had a relationship already that I was building with this photographer from Dorchester. Um, and that in spring of 2019, the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston had had this huge um, like scandal debacle that happened where students from Dorchester were visiting the MFA. They were um, honor students and going on like a special field trip um, and they were racially harassed. And it was this whole thing that the museum had to deal with investigating and um, and their response. And so he, he was like, we were just in conversation, like, Hey, I've got this opportunity. And he says like, Hey, like, you know, about what's happening in Boston, like, how are you going to make sure that that doesn't happen in your space? And so he, he and I developed a show of his work, um, specifically with that context in mind. Um, and I think that was a great moment for us to think about like, okay, like, how are we going to make sure that we're not just a white space, you know, another um, exclusive institution? And how are we going to make sure that we're relevant to our community? Um, and so, you know, um, and I think, I think from there, we with the exhibitions, it was a mixture of questions we know our community is thinking about, like our impact on the environment, and then artists that we knew, we're trying to make sure that um, we're working with a mix of local and regional artists, rather than bringing in people from so far away, but like really building our connection to the local and what's great right here. Um, and yeah, so I'm hoping in our next, in our next year for exhibitions, you know, we're, we're completely virtual right now, but I'm hoping that we'll find a new physical location. And with those exhibitions, thinking a little bit longer term of what story do I want to tell? And I think the next sort of series of questions that I want to be really thinking about and pushing is like who belongs in our community and this idea of like queering the Cape and decolonizing and, and, really making a clear and concerted effort to broaden what we think about as Cape Cod art of away from the beach, the beach gallery and be like, look, there's all this amazing weird stuff that's happening here. Let's bring that up to the forefront and celebrate it. It's exciting. Um, in terms of our classes, we're really drawing from the community for that. And, and um, you know, a lot of the artisans and artists in the area, they also have restaurant jobs that were impacted by the pandemic. They also have, you know, they missed a lot of the fairs, the craft fairs and, and things. So, but they also have a lot of skills that they want to want an opera. There's, so we've been bringing artists in and saying like, what skill do you have? How can we translate that online? And being transparent with how we pay our, pay our instructors. So instructors get 50% of whatever the proceeds are, the gallery gets 50%, and we're automatically putting 5% into our youth initiatives. Um, but we're really trying to make sure that that's 
that's driven by our community for our community rather than me being like I think that we should offer this <laughs> you know <laughs> what kind of do you do any community um outreach in particular like how do you how do you gather research is any anything in particular or a combination or just you know what people do people come sort of open up conversations with you or you know just Mm -hmm. inspiration yeah um i really enjoy talking to people quite a bit so i'm regularly in communication with with artists of like hey like just so you know you know we're thinking about this idea we're thinking about that idea um and a former student of mine stumbled upon our virtual open mics and she has since joined my board and she's doing our digital marketing which is amazing um, like I understand how social media works I grew up with it but I'm also just not interested in it at all <laughs> and and these you know these 20 these young 20 somethings it's just they live and breathe it so she's been amazing about when we have an idea of putting it out there and then people seem to be coming to us um, so that's yeah, but you know, that I was think... actually one one of the questions that, that I wanted to ask you too is like how um you know how you're using social media and how you think that that's what is the role that it plays in this. So that sounds really interesting. What kind of is she doing like Instagram or is she doing like mm -hmm. TikTok or just sort of we're mostly on Instagram right now. Um Instagram and a little bit on Facebook. I think Facebook works a bit better for events um and we yeah we haven't gotten into tiktok i don't yeah i don't know i don't That's know enough next. about no. it <laughs> yeah maybe maybe when we're in person it will make more sense i just don't really know like what would we put on there to be yeah. relevant right now yeah well it's interesting though that it's um you know that you how you're you're sort of building it into it yeah sort of integrating it in with your with your programming a little bit too you say you have like a virtual um um open mic night mm -hmm. yeah that's on the second friday of every month um and we meet via zoom mm -hmm. and it's really sweet like the I think my when we were in person, the open mic was like my favorite thing. It, we would get sometimes like 30 people crowded into this little room. Wow. And we don't serve like we don't serve we didn't serve alcohol um, because it was town property. It was not legal for us to do that. But it was kind of awesome because there's such the Cape has uh, really high rates of drug abuse and alcohol abuse and misuse. And so to have a space that's a sober space that isn't about sobriety, that isn't about recovery. No one, nobody is saying like, oh, you need to get clean because mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not interested <laughs> in telling anyone what to do with their life. I just want to <laughs> have a place for people to get together. And uh -huh. uh, I think that that was something that people in our community, community valued because when you are trying to be sober, there's not a lot of places to go um everything is so so booze centered so yeah uh, i think we have a lot of similar issues in the, on the island as well yeah and that that's an interesting point i hadn't i hadn't thought of that to you know to go somewhere where you're not constantly reminded <laughs> that you're in progress <laughs> in that way <laughs> yeah yeah and you know i'm not gonna judge anybody for, like there's so much that you need to cope with Mm -hmm. um i just hope that my friends can be safe <laughs> that's all that i ask for just be safe yeah yeah i know what that was one of your projects I, I remember that about the portrait project um what about your um your youth initiatives can you talk a little bit about those mm -hmm. um so we launched two youth initiatives um well or they're they're launching mm -hmm. uh, but we've been raising funds for one is a youth mentorship program for BIPOC and LGBT uh, youth. So we're going to team them up with local artists. And um, it'll be a little bit about learning a particular skill 
and creating an artwork for a uh, exhibition, a student exhibition. But it's mostly what we're mostly hoping to do is connect the kids to each other and teach them some uh, really valuable networking skills with the existing community. Mm -hmm. I think that's something that I learned how to do at VCFA is like how to build those business connections because that's really what it is. And like, that's how you can make it in the art world. And I think when I was a student, I was a little bit, I was advised sort of poorly that people were really worried for me of becoming a starving artist. And it's, it's a business. Art is a business. And if you can learn those business skills, then you can be successful. So that's what I'm really hoping to teach the students um, with this mentorship program. And then we also started the Fern Cunningham Memorial Scholarship for um, BIPOC students pursuing a degree in the arts. Uh, Fern Cunningham was an artist and art educator in the Boston area. She was a really fabulous um, bronze sculpture, sculpturist artist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> she made a bunch. She has a, a, so many fabulous um, bronze sculptures in the Boston area. Mm -hmm. And she passed away um, in the past year. And there's a local activist in our area who's cousins with her. So we, we wanted to honor her in that way. Um, nice. so yeah. Um, let's see. Um, I'm going to ask you an interesting question then. How do you, how do you define change? Change. Well, I'll, let me context that a little bit. Say, okay. What you're doing really with your, your programming, at least to me, which is why I, I really wanted to interview you for this, is you're shaping change through your through your programming. So mm -hmm. it's you know, through through an artistic, you know, kind of emergent sort of way. So rather than thinking in terms of like necessarily the coup, <laughs> you know, insurrection, you know, that kind of political things like that, but shaping social change as you do through your programming um how even not necessarily like how do you define it but what do you think about that you know does mm -hmm. it um yeah that's a really interesting question it's probably i'm gonna write it down because it's every now and again there's it it's like a very open-ended question yes yeah you can, these, yeah <laughs> how do you define that's change? the next show no <laughs> um maybe mm. so you know, especially, let me add a little bit more to that. How do you define change too in times of disruption? I mean, the first show that you did, you know, in connection with the racist instances and the kids is kind of an introduction into that. So that's a step into that. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting that that was your first show. Now, of course, you know, with all the impact of COVID and everything, I mean, you could talk um, a little bit about the adjustments that you've had to do. Right. Um, and how you're still shaping change through those adjustments. Yeah, so I think the the core July is very invested in in changing the way we interact with our community, um, and but but in I think in a very different way from how I wanted change to happen. Mm -hmm when I was, you know, 15 years old. I still I still touch in with my 15 year old self um, and make sure like, am I, <laughs> how am I doing? But, um, but I think I've tempered my expectations in a certain way. So, um, and I think, I think the way I'm, Kind of looking at things is that like the local commerce chambers and such um, have a very proven model of this tourist driven industry mm -hmm. and i can respect that that's what sustains our community and on the other hand by overemphasizing that tourist driven model um, 
it's left people who live here feeling like they don't belong here and like this place isn't for them. And so there's a disengagement. Mm -hmm. It's not for, sustainable. Really. Right. Yeah. Right. It's, it's not. And um, because so much is driven by the tourist model in the winter, um, so many of us are are like stuck without you know so many uh, of the restaurants and storefronts close and so then people struggle through the winter and it's like well what if what if we made our community for our community um and i think that also you know part of that tourist tourism driven model has created the a fabricated narrative about what the cape is about and who lives here um in Hyannis, it's very Kennedy centric. Um, and there's this projection of a white affluent maritime, like nautical type of story. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, there's been like the Cape Verdean diaspora has been here for centuries mm -hmm. since whaling, mm -hmm. you know, centuries they and you know never mind the Wampanoag people who still live here and still exist here and so you know the there's always been a queer community like these things they're right there and so my goal I think is to kind of lift them like really gently like lift this up and like make this community um I don't know. I don't know if this is. I don't know if I'm like really, but I'm like really interested. No, in actually, like this pulling this, these things up slowly. Yeah, not no, in is, like an incremental change way, but like just lifting these things that are here. That's that's really that's that's wonderful. Yeah, um, we we have to talk. We we'll have to talk more about that. Connect more about that because that actually is a lot of the things that I want to be working on more as well. You know, other projects that I have that are going to come up. Maybe we can do some sort of um cross cross programming type of things as well but yeah the invisible stories that are yeah not so invisible <laughs> if you open your eyes okay so here's we're running out of time so i'm going to ask you our our larry king question is um tell me the one thing you want the whole world to listen to um my lovebirds that's a good question i think i don't know um i'm always doing so much and like thinking about so many things at one time but right right now i'm really curious about like what is it how can we really be supportive of our communities and really going to the people and seeing seeing what what do people actually want <laughs> and how can i make that happen and how can i be a facilitator um and that's like very me centric i don't know what like what do i want the world to listen to is that there there are there's different ways that we can be and different ways that we can support each other um and making making the focus on focus on others and on and on the community as a whole I think and how can we support support those who maybe aren't being listened to great well is there anything else that you wanted to um to talk about or did, I think we still have a have a few minutes I have the free account, so we have 40 minutes. Okay. <laughs> I think we, we still have, we, I wanted to make sure that I got, you know, a comprehensive beginning and end there. But if there's something else now that you'd like to, to toss in, to, to talk about. Um, I'm not sure. Okay. You know, <laughs> motherhood is... <laughs> is very yeah. much part of your practice as well which i think is really really interesting i loved your drawing series by the way yeah yeah i love i thought that was really really interesting 
Um, um, and I guess actually, okay, I'm going to ask a question. Um, you said you, you, you had to give up your space, correct, mm -hmm. due, due to COVID. Um, do you have any um, idea yet or beginning ideas, emerging ideas on, on what you might pursue this summer, how you might manifest your, your presence? Oh yeah. Well, if we want to talk about like dreaming, I'm super, <laughs> super always dreaming. One of our original plans um, had had been to move into. We were off Main Street, and it would. One of our plans eventually was to move into a cafe space on Main Street and have an art cafe, and the cafe could support some of our funding because we try to do everything um, sliding scale so mm -hmm. that nobody is barred from access to access to the arts for financial reasons. Mm -hmm. um, and then it would be so wonderful to, you know, have this art cafe, have artist studios and really be able to bring professional development to artists. Um, yes, those are, so those are like, <laughs> The wish Some of our big goals, yeah. <laughs> How can I, you know, a huge space where I can put on gigantic exhibitions, you know, <laughs> a foundry, like what? <laughs> a recording studio, like a concert hall. I don't know about like the vineyard. Take over the, take over the town, get the Kennedys out and get the, get the artists in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah it would be amazing to have like a performance venue that's tricky because people are like it's too loud um yeah <laughs> um you guys have um seem to have a pretty active cultural council down there are you is that how you got your space originally or was that a different was that more, more a municipal type of um work? it was the municipal arts and culture coordinators who i was able to get that through Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, the Cultural Council does a lot of grants. There's the Arts Foundation of Cape Cod, which is an act, uh, amazing activist uh, advocate for the arts on the Cape. Mm -hmm. um, and Julie Wake, the executive director of that, is just wonderful. I don't know how much they do with the vineyard. Um, so they're sympathetic to doing an alternative type of... Very. You know, yeah. it's funny as like entrenched as the area is in the traditional art forms anytime i'm like we don't do beach paintings 97 percent of the time people are like thank god mm -hmm. so um i think it has been I, I think it has been refreshing and it's been more well received than i expected i don't know if that's just the circles that i run well it's interesting because <laughs> that's that's what I had a big problem here. This unexpected, you know, working with the um, I was the chair of the, the MV Cultural Council, and what I found was that people were just so has such entrenched beach painting views that in trying to get them even to get into the mission that they're supposed to be following with the council, which is you know, participatory programming, community outreach, and everything, it was just it was crazy. So I'm going to take another tact and work on some long term educational <laughs> we have to change the attitude overall but this sort of refers yeah. back to what you're talking about you know through the economic systems it's so entrenched that it's surprising though so it seems like there's a real difference between your your area your cultural folks down there and our culture cultural folks up here uh, maybe I, i'm always framing it in terms of the kids and i think that helps yeah yeah well that's an interesting aspect too so you're 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 an art teacher and mm -hmm. So you're not right now due to due to COVID. So how do you think that informs your um, your decision making process, or even your, well, your sense of inquiry? You know, of like of curiosity. Yeah. Um. I think it's helped. It's helped me have a bit of credibility with the community. Mm -hmm. um, that was something that I noticed. So I was a very young parent. And as soon as I started to be able to, to introduce myself and say I'm an art teacher, the look of relief was like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but as like, 
<laughs> as difficult as it is culturally to get like the respect and support from teachers, they, I think they, they are very much it. So I think that that was able to help me build some, some trust, but also having those relationships already with the, the young adults of like, oh, I was your art teacher, remember? Um, mm-hmm. Was helpful, but I mean, I don't know. I I think I think just my experience of like having grown up here and seeing everyone move, um, and knowing that that's still happening with my students. That's yeah. That's been that's it. That's to do it. Yeah. And of course, a lot of folks are, you know, being regional scenes anyway because you you know for one reason or another. And of course, but then again, even areas like here, it's the same gentrification process. You have to, you can't afford to stay here either. So who knows where right. they're going to go? Yeah. Oh, oh no, that's just a nurse about my internet thing. Um, okay, so I'll, I think we're almost out of time. So I'll ask you one more quick question. Who, is there anyone, um, is there anyone that you, that you consider like the biggest game changers? that do the things that you do? I mean, are you inspired by anyone? Do you have any, any models? Um, you know, I'm always looking to that, that core group of those five abstract artists as sort mm-hmm. of my, my elders. Um, Jamie Wolf had started, mm-hmm. he was the founder of the Ketuit Center for the Arts. That's, um, he's no longer a part of that group, but that was the first place that I saw I saw a painting by Richard Neal, and he is a really interesting artist. It was, this was like 2006 probably, so still very much in the war in Iraq, you know, what are we doing in the Middle East kind of time. And it was a painting of a soldier, Mm -hmm. but it was painted on all these scraps of wood and shrapnel. Like when you got close, it was like, wow, like look at what materials can be used for. You know, that was really exciting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, interesting and yeah uh, and I think Kutuit has become less their visual arts they still are trying to be um, contemporary and interesting but it doesn't go as far as I want like I would love to have crazy work like the new museum in New York um, that's what I want full immersive here. experiences <laughs> my, that's what my dream actually is here I'd like to do a public a contemporary art contemporary art project space so so that's why I think you know Mass Mocha is always the way the way that Mass Mocha has programs for artist development I think is a really wonderful model and you um, you did some of those programs right mm-hmm, mm-hmm. they're fantastic the assets for artists programs mm-hmm. are amazing um but then I'm also looking at like smaller smaller like mutual aid groups um mm-hmm. as well like this book pleasure activism from marie adrian marie brown Ooh. um oh yeah, has, yeah. i'm yeah, reading that i was reading the yeah, emergent strategy by her so that yeah that one i hadn't i hadn't read I, I want to to read more of her work i just love how it's it's centered in like a gentleness and a care and it's not it's not competitive. It's not cutthroat. Like I, I've never been competitive, <laughs> ever. I'm not interested in that. Um, Me too. I mean, there's there's just so much. I I myself I have like this networky kind of feel. You know, it's all about associations and connections and things like that. Yeah. So cool. Okay. Well, I think we have like a minute. So. We'll wrap it up so that we can make it a cohesive end. Thank you so much. And I really appreciate it. It was really nice talking to you. It's nice to have you haven't chatted at all since our, our, our graduation and our time and our influence from there. So that's another, you know, from Vermont College of Fine Arts. So that's another conversation as well. Um, but I, I definitely would like to connect further with you as we go down the yeah. road, you know, as we work on these projects, because we may be able to to get some some networking done in that way. I'd love to do some some partnership, strategic partnerships with things, places on Cape. That's another thing that we really don't have here. People get so caught in their 
Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's so hard. It's bad. Like I don't drive more than 15 minutes away from my house. I'll be like, you know what? I'm going to go somewhere exotic today. Let's go to Yarmouth. <laughs> <laughs> and we can't even do that. We have five towns here and each one is like, well, you know, who the, who the heck are you? You know, don't yeah. go over yeah. here and do that. Oh man. It's so bad. But um, yeah. Yeah. Let's, we can definitely keep being in touch and sharing, sharing strategies. It's difficult. I'm re I really have like a huge conflict between what I want to do and the conversations that I want to have. And then the way that, I don't know, it's hard to find some people who are interested in having big conversations. And so how do I, how do I maintain my down to earth feel and me too. And then it's like, well, you, you sort of have to catch it on the fly, but sometimes you have to plan it. So you just kind of do it as do it as it is. Um, yeah, what I'm my plan here, you know, with this, I like focusing on the I the, on the qualitative research part of it. So that's, that's a way to connect to through other projects like this, where I'm doing research, even ones that are on my, my own projects. And actually, I'm doing uh, be having one coming up soon with another course, so I may come back and, and talk to you some more about that, because I'm interested in alternative agencies for artists. You know, just the kind of things that we're kind of talking about, maybe something, you know, hybrid or something that's, you know, that's artist centered in any case, you know, that then mm -hmm. reaches out into the community. So, who knows, it's early days, but um, great. And I will send you, um, I have Premiere Pro and everything, so I can um, optimize this. And we'll probably what probably would have to do is post it on a YouTube and, and send you a link and then you can download it. Is that okay? I post can post it on my Vermont College of Fine Arts one, which nobody ever sees. So it's... <laughs> oh, is there, there, they were trying to get some kind of alumni commons going, weren't they? Oh, oh no, I mean, on my, I was thinking on my own, my own account email in order to get it to you. But actually, I mean, they, they might be interested in, that's actually kind of a nice idea to do kind of like a conversation series. I missed your talk, by the way, I, I did see it. And then I had something else that I, I had, I had another meeting to do with my, cause I'm at Northeastern that I had to do with that. Yeah. But I thought that, I felt really bad that I, that I missed it. But then I thought maybe it was good that I did miss it so that this interview would be a little, you know, a little, a little fresher, a little different somehow. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was good. It was a great time for me to have to think about like, okay, what have I done at the Core July and what, how is it connected? And so I kind of realized like all the shows that we did were centered around like in this like big topic of community, but then like different sections, like who do we value? How do we engage with the earth? How, like, what are our family relationships like? Mm -hmm. And then like, who, who belongs? Like, what does it mean to belong on Cape Cod? Mm -hmm. I did, I did a, a beach show in the middle of winter, actually, which, which I thought was so funny. <laughs> you know, um, that's actually the, the same exact same theme that I'm working on for what I want to do. If I do a, um, I'm waiting to hear about doing a PhD program at Northeastern in English. So it's like cultural mapping. And that's actually the project that I proposed, but it was through like the his the embedded song or sounds or whatever, but looking at, you know, just that same thing about who belongs and who doesn't. Yeah. So we have a whole thing here about whether you're a wash ashore or you were born right. here, you know, oh, yeah. all these crazy. We invited poets. So we invited poets to respond to that idea. And then I had two young queer artists. We, we put the poems on the wall and then I had the, these two queer artists draw a mural right on the wall with pencil and charcoal and when you first look at it it was like okay like there's the bridges and there's like a lighthouse and some cottages but like there was no real ground the perspectives were all changing and then they wrote quotes about quotes and thoughts about growing up queer and so if you had like at first if you just like looked it was like okay whatever a cape and then if you like really spent the time it was like oh wait like all these stories in there yeah <laughs> literally um, yeah oh, that's and it was, a great project the poet 
the poetry was really great too. Um, and so I, I think I think drawing people in, drawing in when others and collaborating with others as much as possible has been has been really advantageous to what to what I'm trying to do because I can't I can't do it by myself. Yeah. I've got a whole team of people. We're all volunteers. <laughs> like, but all co- dedicated. Cool. Now, is the um drawing is the dr- poetry drawing thing? Is that um was that recorded? Do you have is that posted anywhere? I have some pictures of it. I don't have that many. There's some of it on our website. Um, I don't have the poems up there. I, I, because that happened. That was right when the pandemic started. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do have the poems. I could share them, um, not to be published because I don't have the yeah no no artist I, permission. But yeah, I was just wondering if it was um, you know, if 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 it was up there anywhere to see because that idea of the drawing and everything sounds sounds really interesting. That's also a thing, an interesting you know issue that you have to deal with too is like people's, you know, their ownership of their own work, you know, and how you how you share it and everything. So we would want to encroach or anything on that so drawing literally is a way that you um community outreach or that you you know a way to research sort of like an arts based Mm -hmm. research in the best way yeah it was kind of cool that was that was fun i like that idea okay okay so what i'm gonna do as i said is i'll because the file is big, so I can't like e- email it or anything. Right, right, yeah. <clears throat> I could like Dropbox it maybe, I don't know, but I have Premiere Pro so I can optimize it. And mm-hmm. what I have done before with other meetings is I posted it on my my drive or okay. my YouTube for the Vermont College of Fine Art, because like I said, nobody ever sees it there. So it shouldn't be like too public, but it, you could have a link to get to it. Or I could figure out something else if that, no, that I think that's that's fine. I and didn't I say anything I, awful. And I kind of <laughs> <laughs> no, it's great. I I kind of like that idea of um the the alumni talking to Vermont College of Fine Arts, the alumni program about like a a conversation kind of series. That's another project that I've I've wanted to do in that too. So you know, you could actually do coffee with Anastasia and Susan. <laughs> an artist (laughs) yeah yeah you'd have to talk to Tatiana and see like I don't know how often they're doing these like more official panels yeah um, or what their plan is for that cool okay well I'm gonna unrecord